Hello, welcome to our training series. We are on customer service training and we are at the part three of our series. Again, I'm your trainer, Edmund Kofi Atachi. Part three will be concentrating on two main attitudes that we need to build up in order to meet customers' expectations or do beyond that in order to delight our cherished clients or customers. So let's prepare ourselves as we go deep into this attitude that every customer service agent must develop. The first of our attitude is ownership. There are two aspects of ownership we need to consider when dealing with customers. During customer service, we often ask ourselves, is it my father's business? And anytime you ask yourself such a question, it means you're about doing less than the best of you. Either you are stressed, you are fed up, or you've given up. We always have to remember that in customer service, wherever we find ourselves working, we need to own the business. You see, answering the question, is it my father's business, reminds me of a story from an elderly man who said, anytime he's asked, is it your father's business? He answers, the business is not just my father's business, the business is my father. Why? You see, the father figure stands for provision, food, shelter, clothing, paying bills, etc. But when you start working, you realize that your work pays the bills, feeds you, clothes you, gives you shelter, and more. So the work becomes a father. So to him, the work is more than his father's business. The work has become his father. So he will treat the work better than his father's business. He will treat the work as his father. It was a good lesson to me, and I think we should all learn from that elderly man who says, no matter where we work, our work is our father. I agree with him because you might be working at a place that is not your own business, but either the business prospects or fields affects you. During one of our training sections, I asked uh, the trainees to decide whether they would prefer to be CEOs of a business that is prospering. And I give them two examples, a business that was well known for mismanagement and went bankrupt, and another business that is doing so well. And when you look at all the key performance indicators, it shows that the business is excelling. And they all chose the business that was doing so well. I also give another example of some banks that folded up in uh, in one country i don't want to be specific but those who were working in those banks actually lost their job and it was difficult getting another job you see whether the business is yours or not when it does well you do well when it doesn't do well you don't do well so what does that mean to net it all, you are the business and the business is you you represent the business, you represent the brand. So you are the business, so own the business. Do it like your father's business. So the first aspect of ownership is owning the business. Think about the prosperity, the profit, the growth of your business as your own business. Whether you are just an employee, you are in management, you are an investor, own the business. And when you own the business, you will serve customers like you will serve them in your father's business. The second aspect of ownership is to own the customer and own the customer's issue till it's resolved. In other words, be a one-stop shop for the customer. You see how difficult it is when you need to get something done as a, an employee. Getting your other departments and colleagues to resolve issues is difficult. Imagine when an external customer is to go through that process. Sometimes a customer comes with a complaint 
and the service agent tries to explain that it is not his or her fault and wants to direct the customer to another department to go through all the hassle. No. Be the one-stop shop where you could own the customer and the issue till it's resolved. You don't even have to push it to another department and sleep, saying it is their duty to resolve it. No. You should own it, get the department involved to resolve the issue. So when we talk about ownership, in terms of owning the customer's issue and getting it resolved, we are looking at one, actively engage the customer. When we talk about actively engaging the customer, we mean listen to the customer carefully, with empathy, understand the need of the customer, and propose solutions. Sometimes, when we are giving customer solutions, we give them solutions they are not aware of. The customer has problem A. We propose solution B and give it to the customer. No, you need to engage the customer. If your problem is A, we have solutions A, B, C, D. Would A be okay or B? And get the confirmation of the customer. Let the customer be involved in the decision making so that your solution can either satisfy or wow the customer. After the first stage of actively engaging, this should not end until you are done with the entire solution. You should get your teams on board. So you get those other departments that need to work with you to get the issue resolved. Get your other colleagues on board, every other stakeholder that needs to come together to give the customer a solution tailored to the customer's need. So you need to actively engage the customer, then you work with your team to delight the customer. So giving the customer a solution would come by involving both the customer and all other stakeholders involved. And you being the spearhead in this solution will bring the customer a delightsome solution. So remember, in ownership, do it like your own father's business and own the issue till it is resolved. Let's get to the second attitude which is emotional intelligence so you ask yourself do we need emotional intelligence in customer service yes two main things that you can know and control your own emotions and also know and influence the emotions of your customers it's so interesting when i see a customer service agent angry because a customer who is angry is voicing out his or her anger you shouldn't be surprised because what you should expect from an angry person is anger it's fumes it's a lot of complaints and you shouldn't get angry that the customer is angry rather you should understand that because the customer is angry you understand the state of the customer so that you can influence that state so that is why emotional intelligence is important in customer service so the two aspects are the self aspect and the environmental aspect. Be aware of your own emotions. Sometimes the reason we fail in customer service is because we are having an emotion that may be stressed, angry, or in a certain state that may not help the situation. So be aware of your own emotions. Know it when you are angry. Know it when you are not in the right mood then learn to manage that emotion you have learn to control that emotion so as the customer approaches you you know your emotion you control it so that you don't push that emotion onto the customer then the other aspect is you should know the customer's emotion so as the customer approaches you the customer may be irate or so angry or frustrated and so the, the, all that comes with a certain amount of emotions you should be aware of that emotion. Then you relate by managing that emotion, influence that emotion of the customer. So the customer is irate with a lot of issues at mind and the customer is pouring all of them out. It is not time to tell the customer, calm down, you are wrong, or try to prove yourself. Agree with the customer. Empathize with the customer. Understand the customer. Emotions. And when you understand the customer's emotions, then you can now relate to that emotion and influence that emotion. That is why 
in emotional intelligence is also key in customer service. So with ownership and emotional intelligence, we can always work towards the one goal of customer service, which is the wow effect, getting our customers delighted. Thank you. See you in the next series. It's going to be awesome.